hip-hop mogul, cultural icon, or that one bald-headed ninja related to one of them guys from Run DMC. No matter how you were introduced to Russell Simmons, I doubt Sexual Predator was on your I was today years old when I found out bingo card. Entrepreneur and legendary music and TV mogul, Russell Simmons rose to prominence during the 80s when he founded Def Jam Recordings. The label would project hip-hop's finest from the corners of the streets to Wall Street. Responsible for propelling rap under the world's mainstream gaze, Russ goes down in history for his exceptional contributions to the culture. But following the allegations, over 20 women claiming he assaulted them over the span of 40 years, Russell may also go down as one of the industry's top predators. Another one bites the dust. What is it about these men with large sums of money preying on vulnerable young women and men? It's like a never ending revolving door of wealthy men being accused of the most treacherous crimes. But before we slam down our gavels, let's give the internet jury a chance to come to their verdict. Russell Simmons is truly a jack of all trades, a successful businessman, CEO, fashion designer, label exec, and a whole bunch of descriptions longer than the yellow brick road chairman and co-founder of the Def Jam Recordings label. He helped launch the careers of some of the biggest names in the game, like Public Enemy, LL Cool J, DMX, Kanye West, and the Beastie Boys. On top of giving the greats their big break, Simmons is also responsible for giving comedy's finest their big breaks. From Martin Lawrence to Chris Rock, and even Dave Chappelle when he founded Def Comedy Jam. Fat Farm, his luxury meets the streets clothing brand, established in 1992, took over the decade as well as the new millennium, and is often credited for setting the tone for the trends we see, saw, in hip hop. Social justice contributor, animal and gay rights activist, a spiritualist and vegan consumer, Russell from the outside looking in may appear to have one of the most well-known yet grounded careers of all time. Given his yogi practices and holistic nature, you'd picture Russell as the perfect candidate for wholesome living. Apparently, that couldn't be farther from the truth. If, well, I'll be damned was a person. Russell's determination to help the so-called black community by creating resources, his rush cards, for example, marketed to make the lives of the blacks easier under the guise of pro-blackness, Despite being with long-term girlfriend turned ex-wife turned ex Kamora Lee, who is of Asian descent, who he got with when she was just 17 and he 35. A devoted father figure, Russell isn't shy about his mission to make the world a better place, but not everything that glitters is gold. And supposedly, Russell is out here giving a solo live action play of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When he stepped into the 21st century, I guess Russ thought he was going to leave all his bad business deals and crimes in the late 1900s. Creator of many, but too bad he didn't create the internet because we have the receipts. You ever got the feeling that something was a little off about Simmons, but can't quite put your finger on it? If so, you aren't alone. Many have been calling out Russell's degenerate behavior for decades now from fake woke alibis to being a serial apist. Go ahead and put an R in front of that. Something in the buttermilk just ain't clean when it comes to so-called Uncle Russell. Look, I know comedy is subjective, but some skits and sketches just don't need to be done, especially one centering Harriet Tubman in a fake sexual tape. In 2013, Russell thought that would be a good idea to launch a parody video uploaded to his all-deaf digital YouTube channel featuring an actress portraying abolitionist Harriet Tubman getting her back blown out. Sorry to all of our younger viewers. You may want to skip this part. Sister Harriet was doing and recording the deed done with her slave owner with the intent of blackmailing him to work on the Underground Railroad. As you'd expect, this caused major backlash and folks were not here for the foolishness. Well, he created Deaf Comedy Jam, what do you expect? And to that we say, you're absolutely right. Different times call for different measures, I guess. Even director Spike Lee wasn't here for Russell's creative vision. 
Of course, Russ came out with an apology shortly after stating how liberal he is, how there are still injustices everywhere. Harriet outwitting the slave owners was politically correct, and yada yada yada. I may have apologized, but I'm not taking down a thing. And he didn't. I'm sure you can find the video floating about on the internet somewhere. Who remembers those rush car commercials that last all of 15 seconds? In 2003, Russell created the Rush Card, a prepaid debit card designed to help those in low-income regions. Targeting the Black American community, the Rush Card sounded great on paper, but when the rollouts came rolling out, it went from helping those in need to taking all of their coins with no hopes of getting them back. A 2015 technical glitch prevented thousands of Rush Card customers from accessing their funds during a days-long outage freezing the accounts of over 100,000 of its users, resulting in bounce checks, unfilled prescriptions, and eviction notices. The outage resulted in a class action lawsuit estimated to have been about $19 million. Rush Card went from playing, oop, and black people's faces under the pretense of building credit to giving over 20 million in settlements. Russ rushed to jump ship just two years later, selling his once promising cards to Green Dot for over a hundred million dollars. His questionable visionary content and shady business practices may be skeptical, but all are relatively minuscule compared to his lengthy list of abuse allegations spanning from 1983 to 2016, and I gotta warn you, the following details are triggering. In case you weren't aware of the hashtag MeToo movement, popularized by the high-profile case of Harvey Weinstein, the former movie producer and Miramax founder facing decades in prison on assault charges, and his accusers, created by Tanya Burke, the women and men speaking out about their own encounters with predators and abusers, hit way too close to home for many across the globe. Celebs and non-celebs alike disclosed experiences and recounted their own stories of assault, encouraging others to come forward with their stories. They came forward all right and haven't slowed down a bit. The industry's lowest hanging fruit were bound to be exposed any day now. In the words of Hip Hop Harry, who's next? Calling yoga enthusiast Russell Simmons to the front, please. Russell has been accused by not one, not two, but over 20 different women in the last four decades. Starting with musician Sherry Hines, a founding member of the first all-girl hip-hop group, Mercedes Ladies. She recalls Russell calling her into his office in 1983 for a so-called business meeting, sat down next to her on the couch, and R-worded her right then and there when she was just 17. Model Kiri Clausen Kaligi begged for help as Russell coerced her into giving him oral pleasures in 1991 when she was also only 17, while film producer Brett Ratner sat there and watched. She also says he came up behind her and penetrated her without permission while she was taking a shower. Lisa Kirk alleged that Simmons followed her into a nightclub bathroom in 1988 and attempted to assault her. Tony Sally knew Russell through her work for the magazine Black Radio Exclusive and says he was inappropriate with her twice. In 1998, he invited her over to his apartment under the pretense he was throwing a party before assaulting her. He pushed me on the bed and jumped on top of me and physically attacked me. Tony also alleges that Russell followed her into a bathroom at a music conference but managed to escape to another room and made sure to barricade the door. Screenwriter Jenny Lumet, who just so happens to be the granddaughter of actress and dancer Lena Horne, claims Russell coerced her into relations after having his driver take them to his home against her will. Drew Dixon, a former Def Jam a and exec and daughter of former DC Mayor Sharon Pratt Dixon, accused Simmons of abuse. Actress Natasha Williams Block alleged that he attempted to force her to perform oral on him after attending a yoga class together. Massage therapist Aaron Beatty was exposed to his degeneracy after booking her for a massage while staying at the Alexis Hotel in Seattle. 
Halfway through the rubdown, Beatty says he exposed himself. He was like, do you want to work this out? He just expected that was what was going to happen. He couldn't believe I would say no. Kelly Catrone ran into him at a party downtown and insisted he had to go to a friend's apartment to grab weed. She went with him thinking nothing of it. After gesturing for her to go inside, not even seconds later, he came up behind her and pushed her hard, resulting in her hitting the floor. He got on top of me and flipped me over. He was grabbing my face, trying to force his tongue in my mouth, put his hands on my breast all over the place. He was pressing up against me and grinding his body on mine. I started to scream. I yelled at him to stop. I kept trying to push him off of me while he held me down. At one point, I looked him in the eye and I told him I would have him killed. I kicked, twisted, and kicked some more until he got off of me and I ran out the door. Real Housewives of New York City star Luann de Lesseps claims he grabbed her inappropriately while in an elevator. He grabbed my butt in an elevator. He was just a pig. I haven't told anybody about that before. I was grossed out. I was like, how dare you? As more and more accusers came forward, actor Terry Crews accused Simmons of attempting to influence him to take back sexual assault allegations that Crews brought up against film executive Adam Vennett, whom he claims grabbed his junk in front of everyone at a party, asking that Terry give him a pass and be reinstated. Terry would later post a screenshot on his Twitter account of the email he had received from Russell. Once the domino effect of accusers were spilling out from every which way, Russell attempted to do damage control by denying all allegations giving PR statements. I vehemently deny all the allegations made against me. They have shocked me to my core as I have never been abusive or violent in any way in my relations with women. I am blessed to have shared extraordinary relationships, whether through work or love, with many great women, and I have enormous respect for the women's movement worldwide and their struggle for respect, dignity, equality, and power. I am devastated by any reason I may have given to anyone to say or think of me in the ways that are currently being described. I have separated myself from my businesses and charities to not become a distraction. Different time periods may be a given, but the majority of Russell Simmons accusers all share a common story. They were either lured to someplace or followed. The accusations shared in this video aren't even a fraction of the dozens of other alleged victims. The countless stories of young women pleading with one of hip hop's most powerful moguls, Seal Lai Abrams, Alexia Norton Jones, Christina Moore, Amanda Seals, Karen Russell, and the list goes on and on and on. Majority black women, all silenced out of fear. The fear of being shunned by both men and women within and outside of the industry. The allegations were so severe that a documentary titled On the Record was ordered to HBO Max in 2020, following the stories of some of Simmons' alleged victims. Russell was also a contributor to Oprah Winfrey's book, The Wisdom of Sundays. However, Oprah wasn't trying to be linked to the mess and ceased his contributions altogether, opting to take him out of any future releases. Russell is now living his best life out in Bali and has been since 2017, ever since the first wave of allegations took heed, and it doesn't seem as if he'll be returning anytime soon. Coincidence? You can respect Russell's contributions to hip hop and the overall music world. Believe he's a great father to his children. Believe some women are falsely accusing him for financial gain. Think that his race may make him more prone to unfair judgment compared to others or whatever the case may be. And still believe that he's a serial predator. You can still believe Russell Simmons assaulted multiple women. You can still believe women, period. Oprah believes Russell Simmons' is victims. Do you? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. And stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.